Ladies and gentlemen, talking about game changers, the port of uh, Antwerp Bruges is one of the largest in the world and we really do hope it remains so. Therefore, they have a lovely innovating team really working on business excellence and upgrading the service levels of the Antwerp Bruges port. And one of the driving forces behind is someone I've been told who loves watching birds, but also, ladies and gentlemen, who is an innovation enabler manager, Piet Opstalen, together with his team. I think they are in the perfect position to talk about upcoming trends. If I'm not mistaken, he will be joined by uh, Carno Tenuvo, the CEO of uh, AYK. So, gentlemen, really curious to find out what the upcoming trends will be. Yeah and how you succeed in uh, sharing with us the high performance of the port. Thank you. Thank you, Virginie. And indeed, bird watching is the best hobby in the world. Uh, a small trip for people traveling tomorrow evening to the coast site in Belgium, close to Knokke, and some of you has an apartment there. I will be I'm there tomorrow, yeah. yes. So go to the beach there. There is a King's Eider, uh, which is a very third uh, observation in Belgium, very rare duck. Uh, it's sitting in the sea there. Normally, it's living in north of Norway. And by the way, yesterday evening, but I couldn't go there, uh, they saw a humpback whale in the same environment. So, so I was dressed like a more blue sea, yeah. um, but you can also yeah. look at this as air. So yeah. it is matching. Okay, okay. Thank so, you. Yeah. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, pleasure to see you here and pleasure to be here. Uh, I think all of us are uh, hardworking people to find solutions for tomorrow. But we should, also, we should also take the time to celebrate. And it's really nice to have the first year of Plug and Play Maritime here and the Expo Day. So uh, we have been celebrating a lot in the last uh, month, actually, because uh, about one month ago, we merged with the port of Seabrugge. Right? I think Antwerp was already a large port. And we became bigger. And the main driver for that, and it was, by the way, very 2,000 year cities, very, a lot of history behind it, and Bruges being there, the center of the world in the 15th century, Antwerp in the 16th century. So I think it's time to rebuild that back again and make uh, of Flanders back again, the center of innovation. Um, I don't show too many figures, but, but the driver for that merger is the energy transition. That's the main reason to do that. Um, and there's is, there is a big challenges ahead of us. We need if we look from a port business, we have to make a transition on three levels. First of all, the shipping, and Alexander was referring to that. So we have to take a major effort to decarbonize the shipping. Antwerp is a, a big uh, bunkering port, the fifth largest in the world. So we have to provide different uh, alternatives for fuel. Second is we have to change the feedstock for the chemical industry. Antwerp is the second largest chemical cluster in the world after Houston. So we have to change that feedstock from a carbon-based one to a non-carbon-based one. And the third one is uh, energy. Uh, the chemical industry is a large uh, energy consumer. And they, they use a lot of steam in their chemical processes. Also there, we need to bring in different forms of uh, energy. And green hydrogen will be a solution for a lot of them, uh, not for everything. Uh, and by the way, Europe will not be able to produce all the green hydrogen it needed within Europe. We will have to import more than 50% of that. And projects like in Namibia, Oman, Chile, Egypt are excellent places to produce there in a sustainable way, new forms of energy. If I can move to the next slide. So, um, okay, doesn't work. Yeah. Yes. Um, but, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Uh, and by the way, in uh, Seabrugge, why, why Seabrugge? Yeah, because there are other ports in, in Europe. Uh, Seabrugge is, is today importing 15% of the LNG uh, into Europe. It's coming from Qatar, uh, Norway, and Algeria, a little bit from uh, Russia, but that's very limited. And uh, Seabrugge is also connected to a network of pipelines in Europe of 6,000 kilometers. So we will use the knowledge, the infrastructure, which is there to build that new green hydrogen supply chain. But that's actually not the topic of uh, the discussion now, because <clears throat> what we would like to do is, is talk about uh, smart shipping. And I think Stefan was already mentioning that we, we should sh start sharing um, assets. And I think assets only means two. What we should do, we should uh, build platforms 
and, and people think platforms, it's, it's Facebook and, and these kind of things. But we should also look to hard uh, infrastructure. No? I think the batteries are probably, yeah, here we are. So um, an idea we had a couple of years ago is that, and, and the port is on itself already a platform. Why? You have a massive amount of hard infrastructure and assets. We, like in Antwerp, we have more than 2 billion euro assets present. You have a lot of companies, Port of Antwerp Bruges, 1,400 companies all present there. So that's a massive platform which is existing. And we should leverage that to, for innovation. Why? Uh, startups are looking, I need to develop and test my solutions. And you can do that in a complex environment like a port. And there we provide hard infrastructure uh, that can be a dock to do testing in all safety or digital infrastructure. We have a LoRa network and the, and the fiber network. We have a massive amount of data you can use, but also process information. Because if tomorrow an autonomous ship is becoming for one of the locks in, uh, in Antwerp here, it will be a completely different process than today. Uh, it will not be captain, you have to move your ship uh, 10 meters because another ship is coming in. No, no, there is no captain anymore on board. So what's that uh, new process then? And that's also the reason we're coming back to that. We are working together with awake.ai. Uh, I will show you two examples of um, what we have been doing. Uh, the first one is uh, our Echo drone. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's go to the next one. Uh, it's our echo drone. By, by the way, you see here a picture of the Durhang dock, the largest tidal dock in Antwerp with the um, impet and DP world terminals and the big container terminals on the left bank. These, uh, that dock here is, and here the big 400 meter container ships are coming in, direct connected uh, to the river. Uh, the river is a very sediment rich environment. And every year, a lot of 2 million cubic meters, and that's a massive amount of sedimentation, is deposing in that dock. So we have to continue to dredge there. And we have issues to have an up-to-date uh, depth map. So a couple of years say, yeah, how can we solve that? I say, let's build an autonomous small ship. Um, if, if one of the big guys is leaving, it can go there, do depth measurements, and go back to the docking station. And that was the idea to build an echo drone. You can see it, by the way, just outside. It's standing there, real life. So please go there. Uh, you see a 360 camera, there's a 5G antenna on it. That's already the second generation. And today, that's operationally used uh, to do depth measurements during dredging activities. So a very nice example. And in the meantime, we learned so much in these four or five years we have been doing that, that it became really a sensor and data platform. So do things. A second example is CIFAR. Um, February 2018, Louis Robert uh, came to us. Uh, two people company, by the way, at that moment. <coughs> I have some technology for remote controlled uh, shipping. Oh, interesting. But I have two problems. I don't have a ship and I don't have a location to test. We say, okay, Robbie, we will help you. So we provided him with a multi-purpose boat for six months, a couple of days a week. And he could use in, on, in dual dock, he do testing and all safety. Six months later, based on that, he could sign his first commercial contract. September 2019, uh, less than 18 months later, he had the first commercial sailing of probably in the world of a remote controlled inland ship. In the meantime, it's a scale up, 50 people working there, and, and they have tens of, uh, more than 10, by the way, um, ships sailing around today from their remote control center, uh, close by the offices of CMB also. So, uh, world leading, world leading. Nowhere in the world you have, besides defense, you have this really operational. And the prediction is that by 2025, so that's not so far from here, that 10% of the inland ships in, in Belgium will be remote controlled, meaning it will be still somebody on board, but the captain will be on shore and, and having their control of the ship. So to give you another example, um, it's about awake.ai, because as a port authority, we manage the ship traffic in the port. Uh, today, that's all manned. But in the future, it will, it will take a few years still, but it can go very fast. And by the way, it can be a disruption happening in the coming five years there. Uh, we need to be ready when more and more autonomous ships are coming sailing to Antwerp and, and Seabruge to, to accept them. And that's the reason we work together with awake.ai. But please, come on. Thank you. All right, so many years ago, I was asked that uh, will autonomous ships ever happen in, in our lifetime? And um, of course, we, we did that. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, uh, next time you do that. Eh? We, we did that uh, already 2018 was the first uh, fully autonomous uh, commercial vessel being launched. And since then, we realized that, well, those ships can never come to port. They will wait like everybody else. And we saw that no other company was solving that challenge. So we have to do it. Now here you see all the items that need to be solved before you can have autonomous vessel entering the port. So this does not change the responsibility of the traffic management of the barge operator, uh, but there are many things to, to consider in the future. Uh, the main stakeholders in this are, are three. So you have the traffic management, uh, you have the remote control center, and uh, you have the autonomous uh, barge as well. But like the other startups talking about here, we need a lot of more data, situational awareness, uh, to be shared a new communication infrastructure as well so the port call phases uh, what happens when an autonomous barge uh, makes a port port call first you set up the communications and uh, prepare uh, for the port call uh, then you start the voyage uh, uh, throughout the voyage, you send these uh, optimization pulses uh, to optimize uh, the performance uh, coming to the port. You make the port entry, you sh share the situation awareness with the tra uh, la latest tra uh, traffic information. Then you navigate through the port, uh, you approach the berth and, and do the mooring. And then finally, you optimize and learn for the next missions. So this is a continuous feedback loop that uh, goes around. Uh, throughout this uh, voyage, um, the smart port will send uh, queries to the uh, autonomous barge uh, about its uh, connect, uh, connection status, um, and the autonomous barge will share its uh, position, uh, navigational status, and route. And you can see the density increasing uh, uh, going uh, towards the port. The port call negotiations uh, is, of course, uh, happening. This is a machine-to-machine -machine, communication that happens in the future um, that is much different than, than uh, uh, today. And uh, finally, the, the important part is that we're actually moving from VHF communication to, uh, to situational awareness data uh, being shared with all the operators. So that's... Uh, Short, short snapshot. Uh, if you want to find out more, please come visit us uh, downstairs. Uh, there's much more detail to be shared. Thank you very much. Thank you.